Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'd like to invite you for this really fun step-by-step that's going to be super relaxing, super beginner-friendly. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to track me with one of our many, many cameras. The idea being that you can see every color mix, you can see every brush stroke, you can see everything I'm doing. So even if you're really, really new to painting, you can create this for yourself at home. This is, in our difficulty scale, probably one of my easier paintings. I've gotten to teach this live with people in person, so this isn't just remote. This is what we had at Pinners. I think you guys are going to really like it because what I found was people could really get this project accomplished at a very high level and feel super good about it, which is, of course, my favorite thing when I share painting with you is that you get to make it yourself. Are you guys ready to jump on in? Oh, yeah. All right, let's get on in. Oh, yes, put this to the side. My, my beautiful framed version. Oh, we have this here. So we're going to be painting on a 9 by 12 surface today. Now, normally I do do wishes, but because this is painting on a white surface, I'm not going to do that. Mm. I'm not going to paint it with another coat of acrylic, mostly because this is very clean and bright. So I don't need to freshen it up at all. And because it's already just and ready paint, so it doesn't really need another thing. If your canvas, your surface is dingy, go ahead and hit it with a white coat and let that dry. Over here, I have out phthalo blue, phthalo green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Mars black, titanium white, cad yellow medium, quinacridone magenta. And optionally, I wanted to remind you that you could have cad red medium or naphthol red if you didn't have the quinacridone. I've done these as blue bunnets. I've done them as purple flowers. They really work as a lot of different spike flowers. So if you need to tweak this once you learn the techniques, do it this way once. Once you learn the techniques, change up the colors and make it work for your house, for your space. I think that's the best. Are you ready to jump in, babe? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we know what we're using. I'm going to just use, just to demo how like friendly this is, I'm going to use just this number eight crystal brush. This isn't like a super expensive brush. It's just a very chill brush. And it does this whole painting, actually. I did this whole painting with just this one brush. Isn't that mm. kind of cool? So to get the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little blue onto my brush and I'm going to kind of get some green. See how I'm doing that? Yeah. Just a little blue, little green, some white, and that makes kind of a turquoise color. And I found I liked the turquoise color. If you think of this being the midway spot, go up a little just above it. In, there's halfway, halfway, up a little bit and in. I'm going to make, it's almost like a slight brown. Look at that. Light brown. Pretty chill stuff right there. <laughs> You're like, wait, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> Just such a fun, easy beginning. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, oh, about a half inch, inch, right? Like this, because this is the, the beginning of the jar. And then we need to make a shoulder, which comes out uh, angling towards the left and down. Again, about another half inch, inch. And then you're going to bring a line from the bottom up. Here we go. I'm just making sure that's a strong line because the glass will appear strong where it's going to be thick. So there, so that's what you have in. Pretty, pretty chill, pretty okay, pretty reasonable. Now, I like to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and some of my black at first. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to start putting in my stems. Now, one of my stems comes from up here and is going to come down the board. I find sometimes it helps me to change the positioning of my canvas so that my brush stroke is fluid. You might not know this if you're new, but you will have areas that you're able to make strong strokes and directions and areas that you'll make weak strokes. When you learn that, start making little adjustments so you're always putting yourself in the winning position. All right, so I'm gonna come right here. This is the edge of the shoulder. I'm gonna come and make a mark, oh, say about a half inch above, right? And then I like to just take this and curve it down. See how we did that? And you curve it down. That's pretty, that's pretty reasonable. Now it has, I'm going to get a little more black on there. It has a little friend that's happening. That's maybe going to be 
oh, I would say actually even out here a bit, kind of even more at an angle. So I'll lengthen that and I'm going to come shorter right here. And then I'm going to cross these two. See how we're doing? How fun is that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. This is a really simple painting. This is just a simple, friendly, yet really pretty painting. Now, there is one that sort of comes, starts here. And it's going to come sort of straight down and then at the last minute curve. See how we're making this beautiful arrangements of stems? Yeah. It's fun. Your friend is here. He's a little bit longer. And he's going to curve from up here, right? You see that? We're up here. And then I'm going to come down, come down, come down, come down. What? Yeah, we did that because we're awesome. Now I'm going to put a couple that are maybe going to come out here. Let's do one that's up here and is a little bit longer. So now we have this nice little arrangement of stems. I can even come in here. You can always come in and also do something like this. You can go. See how we make these little like twigs in there? Good stuff. Very good stuff. I'm also going to take a little of my yellow ochre and some of my white. Just go ahead and make a couple highlights on the forward stems. And we're just giving them a little dimensionality. Right? Yeah. The nice thing about our, our lessons live is, is that you can see how this pulls that stem to the front. That highlight, it's just a cool trick you can do. So now you have distant stems. Now you have up close stems. That's all you had to do to get that. I don't want the brown to drag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry everything real quick because I just want my paint to stay where it is and not go anywhere else. I'm not looking for any wet into wet blending here. I love my hair dryer. Gotcha. I'm going to use it. Okay. Yeah. So what you're going to do is just make sure you use your hair dryer on the lowest heat setting. Um, and that's going to make sure the uh, acrylic paint doesn't get soft. We don't have any color shift. But also you want to make sure it's fully dry so you don't drag any of that paint along as you're uh, putting more layers on there. And that, yeah, well, you just want to really get that going. So I'm going to get some yellow all loaded into my brush. And you can see what I'll do is I'll come and I'll bring this water, I dip in, and I'm thinning the yellow, as you can see right here, and I'm getting it all really beautifully loaded into my brush. Right? If you've got craft paint, you won't have to do as much prep work to thin it. And I'm going to come here to the green, and I drag my brush's edge into the green. Come back. And this is like a double load on the brush. Mm, can and you I'm show that worth your other just yeah, roll that over so they can see what they're saying? So see, see there's, there's a green edge there and then yellow. Yeah. I like to not have to do a lot of work sometimes when I'm painting something. And if there's something I can do about the way that I load it, I'm gonna twirl oh. and pull a leaf. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Oh, now maybe show me, this side. So I've got the green here and the yellow here. And I'm gonna maybe I'll come this way. I'm gonna press in. Look at that little leaf. Oh, it's got yeah. a neat little streak there. Wasn't sure how big you're going to make them. Maybe you go like that. Sometimes I like to roll them. If you need to get more yellow, you can easily get more yellow. And you can always get a stronger bit of green. And you can see that you've got the blend on that pretty easily. Some of these leaves are just... Oh, hold on. I'm going to come right here. Okay. Maybe this one will come up. I don't want to switch cameras because I can see so good. The With that angle. camera? Yeah. I just got to gotta sneak it in right between your shoulder. There it is. Shoop. That's just fine. I might even put one leaf down there. So I've got a few leaves that are sitting here. And I'm going to rinse out vigorously. And while all this is having a think, I like to say that while well, it has to have a think, think about what it's done. I'm going to start putting in Mr. Adorable Bee Pants. <gasps> I like the bees. So, Mr. Busy, Busy Bee, this will be, I don't know, my sixth, seventh bee. We do a lot of bees. Why does he have to be busy? Why can't he be the lazy bee? No, I don't got no lazy bees. Have you seen how much I work? No lazy bees. <laughs> no lazy bees. <laughs> Just that one on Facebook that keeps in that woman's hand. I really, really am going to be heartbroken if it ever comes out that that wasn't true. So, the bee really is, and I'll show you, he's a little circle. I'm going to make this little circle. See that little circle? It's the size of a pea. You guys know how big a pea is. Yeah. And then 
he's going to have like this little sort of little domey butt shape that comes around like that. And that sort of gives me the basis for everything I'm going to do with him after that. Because as soon as I have that shape, I'm going to make these little fuzzy strokes. Now, what you guys need to realize is that some of you will have uh, skinny bees, skinny, lean, fast bees. Some of you will have very uh, roly-poly, fuzzy bees that are super fat and super, like, barely getting to the flower. Everybody's bee is going to be a little bit different. I didn't send any homework home, so no one knows what your bee is supposed to be. My recommendation is just tell your friends and family that it's exactly like mine and that you're a total genius. I will back you up if they write me. I've never had anyone write me, but if any spouse ever wrote me, I'd be like, yes, just like mine. She's amazing. That's correct. I'm on your team. So I'm bringing the little fuzz back. I'm bringing the little fuzz back. Little fuzz back. And then uh, I am painting him in. And this is his first little layer. And what you can see there is it's sort of like a, a little black. <laughs> <laughs> kind of does look a little bit like that. I'm going to get some of my yellow ochre. Just a little bit of that in there. I rinsed out some of the black because I don't want it to be completely black. And I'm going to load this up, as you can see. And I'm going to come here. And I come about an inch up right behind his head. And I make a little curve stroke. Can you see that little curve stroke? Then you come down at a bit of an angle. See right there? Not too far in. That's like a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to join this to the wing. And then I'll just paint some of this in with that gold. See, not all of it, just some of it. I'm going to make a forward friend, and it's shorter. Shorter than its friend. And then a little bit filled in, but I leave the white right there. And the reason is it's shorter is it's in perspective, right? Because it's the distant wing, the wing in perspective. And then he needs a little back wing, sort of the same deal, but much smaller than the front two. There you go. Now we got little wings. He can just have a sit. Think about what he's done. Yes. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of do these flowers. And one of the things that I find helps me is if I come load up in just yellow, just a little bit of yellow, and let's do this one here. I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow, and I'm going to continue this line from the stem. And let's just bend this over. It's short. It's about four of my fingers, right? Okay. This line here. Let's, uh, let's kind of take it where I'm going to stroke to my strength, right? So now I've tipped the jar this way. I want this stem to kind of head up towards the upper corner. So I'm going to go like that. See how that's going to help me when I make my spike flowers? Yeah. His little friend kind of spiking upward. But I'm going to make this one maybe uh, mid-size, maybe mid-range. This one, I can go upwards. He's going to be like short. And then up there, we'll go like that. That is the current number of little ones I have in. I may fill in an extra if I feel like a little spot has a hole in it, but I find it's good to get these first ones in. I'm rinsing out. So once again, I'll load up with a fresh bit of my yellow, and you might come and get some of your magenta right into that. And I like to come right here to the edge, the tip. See how this is loaded? A little magenta, a little yellow. And I make little tiny dots. Do you see those little tiny dots? The stroke is small. It curves. There's generally an outer stroke, an outer stroke, and then maybe one on the inside. As I'm going, I can add more and more of the red to my brush stroke. If I'm losing flow, I dip in about midway on the edge of my bristles, and I come back in, and I can add some more. And if I get some white as I'm going, some cool stuff will happen. Each time I go down, I might make these bigger. Maybe get a little more of that. Grab some of your yellow. I'm loosely mixing these. Look at that. That's 
That's a nice little spike, right? Hmm. And if I want to give it some personality, I grab some white and some yellow. Come back. Stroke. You see oh. how the, that extra layer? The dimensionality. Gives that flower a small amount of dimension. Now let's go uh, pink and yellow again. The magenta. And again, you can use your red, and I'll show you what that'll look like if you decide to. I'm going to get some white on this one. I'm loosely mixed. I'm going to come up here to the edge. Sometimes it's nice to make these little tiny, tiny little bits of petals that might come out. You can see it's a curve, curve, inward stroke. Curve, curve, inward stroke. And you can see as I'm pushing down, I'm pressing harder, and I'm letting the brush do the work. Get a bunch more of the magenta on there, some loosely mixed yellow. Isn't that fun? Well, I mean, I think it's fun. I think it's pretty fun. Just making these little flowers, pulling them down. It's okay that this one layers over the top one. That's actually a nice thing. I'm just getting my mix. Now, I can come and get some white and some yellow right into there. And again, Press in. What am I doing? I'm adding dimensionality. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Mm. And how it has that sort of gradated, gradated color mix that, that was laid down. And that's because you didn't blend it on your brush, right? Right. I have to be very careful not to over, over blend. Now, maybe the next one I want, I want it to be more red. So I'm going to take my magenta. And I could take your naphthol red, you could take anything, or you could take just magenta. And I'm going to get some white on here. And let's make this one, maybe that series of colors. Changing up oh. the value set of these. Okay. That's it. Okay, so what you did there by creating that little downward brush stroke. This one you here? Made, yeah. You made it look like there was little one poking straight up. That's what That's, we're doing. You that was very tricky. It is very tricky. We gotta be tricky. Now I'm gonna get some red. It helps sometimes to help the red show to get some yellow. Sorry I'm pointing out in all your tricks. No, no, please do. The whole point of this show is to show the tricks. These are these are supposed to be cunning tricks that you keep in your artist toolbox. Uh, yeah, I could do that. It's not really my thing. <laughs> okay, that's probably. I don't good. really do that so much. I like to share what I'm doing. I like to make it kind of public. That gives me a great deal of joy. So I've got that there. Uh, we can do one that's maybe it starts red. Mm. Right, it could start red more, and maybe we go dot. You know, like you do. I want way more pigment on there. If I need to get magenta, I just want to have it cover. All right, and just come down. Now I'm going to rinse out so much, right? I'm going to get the yellow and really load some of that yellow into the brush. Sometimes it helps for the yellow to cover if you add a smidge of white to it. Just have it cover what it's got. And then I'm going to come in and start these little red strokes, right? The little yellow strokes that come down. You see how we're doing? Pulling those in. And then I go right back into the red. Maybe a couple places I add these little dimensional petals. Look at those. So now it feels like we have lots of different types of flowers, doesn't it? Lots of different types of flowers. More yellow this time, maybe. A little mm. bit of the white. And we'll come down and we'll... Give this flower some of the yellow. 
And at first, when you do yellow, it doesn't have that much going on because it's just yellow. But that's okay because we have a plan that we're going to lean into. So as soon as I have that in, I can go like just even through my magenta here. Just tap in a couple of these little extra flowers. See how all of a sudden it's got mm. something afoot? Yeah. And you this hear me vigorously so rinsing quick. out. This, I'm sorry, this just comes together so quickly. It does. It's just a joy. Now I'm going to add a little of my green to my yellow like I did before. And I'm going to add some more petals. Oh. I like to put them just around places. The stroke is a little bit curved. And I just feel like it fills out the arrangement. Oh, yeah. I also think it's nice to give some dropping petals. So, like, maybe a little of the magenta and yellow all on one brush, and then I can just... Tap down a little cascade of... Oh, yeah. Little bits of petals that have fallen, that are falling all around Mr. B Pants. Just something fun and light. Now I'm going to finish my jar, which was my thalo blue and my thalo green. All right. And I've got to make my forward facing mouth. So sometimes I find it helps for coverage for it to cover what's underneath it. Add a little white to it. Now it's going to be smile. So this was a frown. This is just a light little smile. Like a Mona Lisa level of smile. And then it has a little friend down here on the shoulder that smiles just the same amount. See? Just a Mona Lisa level of smile. And then we're going to come here, pull down a little bit of paint, roughly. See how we're doing? Rough. Get a little more white into it so it's, you know, has that feeling of glass. You can see it's just a dry brush. I'm very loose and kind of wild about it. I like to bring a little bit on the front here. It just talks about how this is glass. And it's just, we're just trying to say, hey, this is glass. And get some more of my blue in here. Bring in a little stroke there, and then this comes across. Hmm. Right? Not too bad. Looking jar-like. Looking like a jar. Then let's add some dark blue right here. Just the dark blue. A couple places. Just to have it be a little bit darker. It doesn't take a lot. And that's all that is to get that jar in. The jar is very, very chill. Right? Just a chill little jar. You can always bring a little lighter color along the... Whatever you need to do to help it go glass. Last thing. Mr. B! Yes. Mr. B, Mr. B. So Mr. B, I like to take a little bit of my yellow, and it's okay if it gets some red in it, because I think that actually makes it cuter. And we make a little bit of uh, fuzz off the back here. A little spot of fuzz, of yellow fuzz, like you have. Making little hair strokes. Again, some more yellow. It's good if there's red in it. That's okay. A little more fuzz off the back of the head. I also find it's kind of nice sometimes to give them a little fuzz right there, a little kind of like almost a cheek. Just give it another little spot of yellow because they're just crazy like... They're crafty like that. Mm. You might not know this, but they're crafty. <laughs> the next thing is I'll get a bunch of uh, black back on my brush. And again, I haven't changed brushes, have I? This is just a number eight crystal. That's all that's going on here. And I come to the edge of my wing and make a thin, fine line of just pure black. And on the front, I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to make a couple of little 
sevens inside the wing. It's really like these little sevens. What I'm trying to talk about is little bits of cells, little wing cells. I like to give it some forward antenna. So up and over, up and over. See those? They're cute, right? Yeah. You might want to make one of these a little longer. Raise a little in perspective. And I think he needs a little forward foot that goes, oh, maybe another little one here. They got middle legs. And then little back legs. And what's great is like when you're weird with their legs, it's like actually good because little bug legs are so bizarre. <laughs> so I get that in. That's pretty terrific, right? Now I can come in with a little more black. And I just make sure that he's like wonderfully rich and dark and fuzzy as he should be or he needs to be. See that just richened him up. I'm going to dry him real fast with the hair dryer. Okay. Real fast. Just make sure he's got that way. When she puts the next layer on, I'm guessing of yellow, it doesn't pick up the black underneath there and get muddied. I'm going to get some of my white and I need to thin oh. it enough and I'm going to thin it by just dipping in the water and kind of swirling around. See how that paint is thin now? Or you can use fluid paint. I may even take my towel and kind of take the pigment out of the brush but I'm not going to get the brush wet again. And I'm also going to use my fingers to make sure it's sort of at a point. I'm going to put my vision enhancers on. Now I can see the canvas and but not anything far away. <laughs> And I'm going to load up a little paint onto my brush. I'm going to come here and I make like this little weird horseshoe shape. Or sesame seed shape. It's not closed there. And I like to give him a little reflection. That's his little eye. Mm, yeah. And then I give him a little bit right here. A little bit there. And sometimes it's nice to hit um, some reflections on the. Is like their little thoraxes and things are shiny. Turn this on its side. Turquoise is so nice. Let's find a color that we like. Oh, there we go. And get the hair out. Shaving my brush ready with my to wrap towel. Up, aren't you? Huh? You're almost done, aren't you? I am done. Wow. This is under a 30 minute painting. Just something relaxing minutes. to do on a Saturday. You can do this all ages, all levels. Yes, there's a traceable if you want one. But mostly it's just something fun you can do. Change the flower colors. Give it two or three bees. Add a caterpillar. Be playful. There's so much room in this to just make it your own. I'm going to turn around. That turned out great. It's just one of those things. Art doesn't have to be uh, eight hours of your life. I uh, hope everyone in Acrylic April kind of figured that out. I was like, oh, I don't have to be here for eight hours. It's great to have eight hours, but not every project needs to be a marathon. Some of them are just a little stroll in the park. And I would say this is definitely that stroll in the park with some flowers and some bees. I hope you'll show up tomorrow because we've got a gorgeous girl in a red dress in the rain that she's going to be a lot of fun to do to add to your other rainy day collection. Be good to yourself, good to each other, and I will see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.